Today is November 5th. This is the Microsoft Standup. And here we go. Um, we'll just jump right into it. How about Chris and Bayer? How are things going? Uh, things are going well. I have finished coding the uh, the batch job that is going to do the wakeboard file designations. I am testing it now. I hope to have my testing done today. Um, and then include this in what's running in um, in test so that we can have uh, some cycles go through and test. Um, nothing's really blocking me. Uh, so um, I guess I do have a question for you, Michael, which would be, um, you know, what if I get this if I get this up today? Um, what else were you were you we hoping for um, by the end of the week as far as you know having something in test for us to? Yeah, uh, well, the objective is to get Ken what he needs, right? Okay, so the API calls would be next. Yeah. Okay. All right, I can do that tomorrow. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so let's go to Ken. So I worked with Derek this morning on getting the monkey patch working and uh, well, actually we did that yesterday and that was working, but today he had a problem where his hardware stopped working. So, um, you know, there's some different stuff going on there. Uh, but what I realized is the monkey patch just covers the new software for the hardware when in reality, there's about 10 things that have to change on the Kivi image to work. Um, like a conf file that has the A play command in it with the wrong device identifier and things like that. So I just finished up a uh, confluence page, uh, documented the entire process, brought in all the things that have to change beyond just the new hardware stuff, like uh, which libraries have to be added and whatnot. And so I'll have a, I have a document that's uh, it's uploading the image as we speak. So on that page, you can follow it and download the image and burn the image and download the zip file and unzip it and then run the commands in that page. And it should get your Kivi Mark II up and running with everything um, in the hardware test, as well as it integrated in Mycroft Core so that the next time you reboot, after you apply the patch, everything should be in there. And so that's what I'm working on. Okay. I'm actually planning on taking it through its paces and validating the website very shortly here. And then tomorrow, who has new hardware that wants to test this? I can, I can, you know, send them the page and run through it with them. Do you have a working Mark II, Michael? I do not have one. Um, Chris Bear should have one, right? Okay. All right, and, then I'll uh, speak with Chris. Once this is ready, and I validated it, and have him do it, and make sure that it works as advertised. Okay, cool. And Gez should be getting one in a couple of months, right? <laughs> right. And yeah, just when uh, you're ready, Ken, and we can we can walk through getting one okay. set up. Yep. Well, the first thing we got to do uh, is I want to make sure, and I just sent an email out to Kevin and Ken and Michael Copy, make sure that. That we're not wasting our time on ones that are configured differently or that we identify the right configuration. I do believe the ones I sent to Chris and Gaz are now somewhat outdated and that they were configured to use, they were the JLC PC, PCB build that Kevin hand built and not the, the AA, the newest assembler. And I, I, I could be wrong, but I believe one is configured to run through the XMOS, and one is configured to run through the um, <clears throat> GPIO on the Pi for a couple of things, right? Um, so there's a slight difference possibly between those two. I think we need to nail that down. Okay, yeah, Kevin's got a spreadsheet that's got a list of all the devices and their part numbers, serial numbers, and how they're configured. So okay, so that's where we can go to get the definitive answer on a board number and how the three hardware components are interfaced with, correct? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, well, let, so if, can we switch the, the JLC PCB ones to the 
the same data path as the new ones, or is it it's a hard, total hardware thing? Uh, it requires you know a soldering iron, but it's not actually a big yeah. deal. It's just moving a resistor from one spot to another. Okay. Well, I think for Vayer, um, we just swap his out with one of the new advanced ones. But for Gez, you might need to get your soldering iron out. <laughs> well, there's there's no reason why you know Ken wrote the software to make them all work, right? So there's no reason why Gez can't just use it the way it is. Yeah. Okay. That's well, exactly right. Uh, if you remember, Derek, when we gave it the um, the board type on the run hardware test thing, uh, that's, or we modified that file in your case that for the board type, that defines the three interfaces and how they're interfaced with, and it's completely flexible. We have two different ways of interfacing with each of the three components, and that supports all of them. So we just need to figure out via the Kevin paper what the configuration for that board is, and then we should be able to you know, get it running. Okay. Regardless well, of what hardware it is, but we just need to know what hardware it is. True, true. But, but my point kind of is, you know, everyone can switch theirs over to one, except for you know, Giz would have to do it himself. But it would be nice to. I mean, there's only a few of the old ones out there in the wild, so um, eventually, it'd just be nice to to stop using those or get them switched over to the Great. to match the rest. <clears throat> My build your own Mark II team building exercise sounds better and better the closer we get to Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, I think that's definitely going to happen. Uh, yeah. Hey, do you, are, is this currently being recorded? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, I need a, a minute with Michael. Okay. Not, I guess, urgently, but right after this, please. Sure. Uh, so let's move on then to, uh, to Gez. Uh, I just checked, and my SJ201 is in Darwin, um, but they can't deliver to the address that I gave them, so figure that out. Um, but uh, yesterday, I did a first draft of a, um, a new default contributing guide. So we've got contribution guides um, for a few major projects like Microsoft Core and Lingua Franca that are very specific to them. Um, but this will now show up on every, well, once it's published, it will show up on every repo. So it just provides sort of generic instructions for, you know, how to get it, how to get Python projects set up and, um, and our broad approach to, to development workflows. Um, any feedback on it is very, very welcome. Uh, the, um, the, Micro skills um, certificate CI, as in running multiple CI jobs at the same time, uh, is going well. I um, uh, am essentially creating a lockable resource per branch rather than just for micro skills and um, restructuring the file system a little bit um, just so that things don't override each other. Um, the only thing that I'm still concerned about potentially there is that I think we use the same identity files for all jobs, and I don't know if that might cause issues. Um, so this is certainly better than what it was. So I thought we'd we'd do this and then see if we run into any stuff. But I just thought I'd throw that out there, particularly for Bear to um, think about. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, that's about it, I think. OK. Uh, what, uh, what's next on your plate? Uh, I'm just finishing up this, um, the Jenkins file for that, um, for the Minecraft skills. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to go across and tweet the Minecraft core one, because uh, I think we're putting stuff in a uh, we're putting the Alua data not where it, it was intended to go. Um, and then I need to go back and have a look at what's next. Guys, if you're in those Jenkins files, if you want to add the um, Docker image delete stuff, 
it's working in Selenium, and try that. that would be oh yeah. Good, since you're in there. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll give this a go first and then I'll see if I can drop that in as well. Yeah. Okay, great. Well then we'll talk tomorrow uh, about, you know, next things then. Um, maybe just the first thing that pops into my head is that maybe you can uh, tag team with Ken on the uh, the build process. Uh, but totally. Just, just, just oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. If um if I can get my if I can extract my SJ two hundred one from FedEx, wherever it is, uh, then that will definitely be my my next point of call. Okay. The other, uh, great. The other Derek? Thing, if you want, you can help with the um. The QT build process as well, the actual core piece. That's what I was referring to, actually. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can I can do that. Yeah. Okay. I'll get with you in the morning and let you know what, where I'm at and what what would what will be be considered success. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm going to be taking my COVID test tomorrow at ten. So I'll, geez, I can't get. Up. I'll talk to you after tonight. A after this meeting, let you and I get together. Yeah. Cool. Sounds good. Okay, okay great. All right. uh, Derek? All right, so today, um, yeah, I was working with Ken. And then after that, I was mostly packing things to take. Um, so we've got kind of 20 sets of a lot of things uh, the displays, the pies, the SJ201s I have, um, and then all the other parts and such that go with that. Um, so that took a while and then just continuing to get any other 3D printed parts um, ready uh, that I can take along with me as well. Um, but yes, we are definitely going to be assembling some in Hawaii and uh, I think the plan will be to, um, for you guys mostly to work on the SJ230s, the laser cut ones. So I did want to make sure Josh had enough plastic. Uh, I think he does. Um, and he's got a bunch of uh, audio chambers printed. So we can put those together. Those go together really quickly. And then I will have a couple of the SJ240s that we'll be working on for you know more advanced acoustic testing and stuff. And we can continue to build those. Actually, he's looking into seeing if we can get some 3D printed ones um, shipped to us while we're there. So, okay. If the, if if we decide to do that, we can get pretty quick turnaround. The 3D hub site actually kind of is a network of 3D printers. There's probably even people on the island that you can sub to and and get parts that way. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Um, what's uh, what's next for you? Yeah, tomorrow mostly be. Um, getting the 3D printed, continue to get the 3D printed stuff cleaned up and packed up and loosens, like making sure I've got everything and, and such. <clears throat> uh, which means I probably won't, you know, what I was working with Ken on today and yesterday, I don't think I'm going to have a whole lot of time to create that. Um, you know, the idea was to get the patch installed and then I was going to image the thumb drive so that we had kind of a quick and dirty image but that's probably not going to happen. Um, but I think that's that's okay. We just get that done or kind of first day at the the summit. Okay. Yeah. As long as we've got a process that we know works, and I guess Chris Fair is going to be testing that with Ken tomorrow. Um, right. So yeah, I, I, I'd I'd like to make sure that you know we get that process nailed down before we're all there and trying to use it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. If there's, yeah, you guys can get something figured out um, before then. That'd be awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Josh, you want to give us a quick update? Uh, negotiating our update process, getting this place ready for you guys. Caught up with some email and got back and forth with the attorneys about our offensive case. Um, I think that pretty much sums up the last day or so. I'm sure there's some other stuff in there. 3D printing, I guess. And then I, can, I guess I'm gonna have to bust that printer open again and clean it, which I'm not quite sure what's going on with that, but um, I just about have all the parts we need. Uh, there's plenty of plastic here, Derek. So, okay. and it's available Great. It's available locally if there's a problem. Yeah, I think you can just get a Home Depot actually. Do you have a Home Depot on the big island? 
yeah, there's the close. My closest grocery store is Costco. There's a Home Depot right next door. There's a Lowe's there. There's a Safeway. We have a Target. Like all of that is closer to my house than to yours. So. All right, great. Um, as for myself, uh, I've been focused on the the PCV stuff. Um, I got with Kevin this morning. We did a bit of a review, found some problems in the layout. Uh, well, not problems per se, but things that could be better just in terms of making sure we're, we're not uh, outputting too much, uh, you know, radiation that we don't need to do. Um, and um, I'm going to get with him again later today. And uh, I've also been uh, looking at sourcing some alternative PCPA uh, companies. Um, I'm trying to nail down that process so that we can get a whole bunch of quotes from all over. Uh, I know we discussed, uh, or I, I had discussed with Josh, you know, trying to find places other than China to manufacture. They are the uh, uh, definitely the cheapest and sometimes the fastest. Uh, but we're I want to look and see, you know, do a comprehensive look and see if we can find something that's you know maybe um, also cheap uh, and uh, may not come with some of the, the the problems that we could run into. Um, and uh, yeah, and I've been doing some organizing uh, again on the Jira tickets and, and uh, the um, agenda for the summit. So um, that's it for me. So I think that's it. Uh, Josh needs to talk to me about something and uh, let's see. Ken wants to talk to somebody after this meeting, so I think we'll just adjourn here unless the, there are any other topics people want to bring up. And No, I, I will be extending tomorrow's meeting an, an extra half hour or so so we can talk about uh, anything we need to talk about for about the summit. Right. Okay, well, that's it for today then. <laughs>